Today's video is on quantization and when and how you should be thinking about using quantization. Different styles typically have different degrees to which they use quantization. So today I'm going to be looking at lo-fi and trap so you guys can see the difference between these two extreme examples and how useful quantization can be. Before we get into it guys, please do like, subscribe. If you guys have trouble with understanding quantization like I did for a very long time, leave a comment down below. I'm hoping this video is gonna help clear things up for you though. All right, so I have my lo-fi beat here. I'm gonna play it for you guys real quick. All right, so in my beat here, I have parts that I quantized and others that I didn't. As a starting point, I recommend quantizing a few anchor points in your beat. So what I do, is I take the very first kick of each bar and I have it completely flush against the grid as well as my snares. You guys can see they are perfectly quantized and on grid. Now using these anchor points that are completely quantized and provide a perfect sense of timing as the structure and foundation of the beat, what I did was I completely unquantized all the components around these anchor points in order to build context. So what do I mean by context? For example, if I take this beat and I quantize every single element, Let's start off by going into the hi-hats, for example. You guys can see I played these freehand and then off the grid. Here's the grid line, for example, and this is when the actual hi-hat is hitting. So this is not on time at all, but if I did want to quantize it and make sure it's on time, what you need to do is go into the top left corner here, select snap to grid, this little magnet up here. Select whichever grid value that you want. For now, we'll keep this at a quarter beat. Now, when I hit Control and Q on my keyboard, you guys can see all of the notes go completely flush against the grid now. Again, this is how it looked before. As you guys can see, there are gaps in between the grid and when I actually played the instrument. And so when I quantize it, it pushes it completely against the grid. Alternatively, you can hit Alt and Q. This lets you control the degree to which you want to quantize. So there are two important functions when using this type of advanced quantization. The start time here controls how flush against the grid you want it. All the way to the right means it's completely quantized. But if we move it a little bit down, you guys can see it starts going back to the original unquantized programming that I originally had these hi-hats on. So this lets you control just how quantized you want your sounds to be. The duration effects here lets you control whether or not you want the length of each note to be quantized. So if I leave the duration alone, it will not change how long the notes are. But as soon as I change this to quantized duration, you guys can see the end points become flush with the grid as well. So what I'm gonna do now is quantize every single instrument in here, and I'm gonna show you guys how this beat's gonna sound after. As you guys can hear, the rhythm of the beat completely changed and it just feels a lot more rigid now. To me, this feels a little bit boring. It doesn't have an interesting groove to the beat now. So this is the idea of context I think is very important, but to really help you guys understand it visually, I'm gonna open paint real quick here. If I show you guys this image, for example, I'm willing to bet nothing really caught your eye, nothing really popped out and grabbed your attention with this image. It's just a bunch of straight lines. And if I showed you guys this image, I'm willing to bet the exact same thing. It's just a bunch of red slanted lines, nothing really popped out and caught your eye. But when I show you guys this image, I'm willing to bet your eye immediately went to the red lines here. And this is the idea of context. If you want something in your beat to stand out, to be really unique and interesting, you need to provide context around that. For example, if we had everything completely unquantized, like all a bunch of straight lines in this diagram, nothing's really gonna jump out and be interesting to us. But if you have certain components in the beat that are completely quantized and others around it that are unquantized, then we get this type of effect here. So to strike this idea home, let's say I take the components of the beat that are quantized and on grid, those anchor points that I showed you guys in the beginning, and I take them off grid and have them unquantized, this is how it's going to sound. You guys can hear the rhythm is off now, there's no sense of perfect timing in the beat, and it just feels like a complete mess. What the quantized parts of your beat are going to do is help create a perfect sense of timing. So when we start adding components around this foundation that are unquantized, those unquantized portions have a context to contrast against. And they're just gonna sound a lot more interesting and jump out to us just because there is a perfect sense of timing within our beat. So you guys can see here, I have my ghost kicks that are off the grid. Again, another layer of kicks here, just off the grid. The bass line, again, off the grid. But if I look at my anchor points here, this kick pattern, completely on the grid and my snares are completely on the grid. So now all those other components that are off the grid now just sound a lot more interesting because this provides a context for us. So that's concept number one. Concept number two is just how far off the grid should you be. So again, this was a lo-fi beat. Lo-fi is a style known to have a very human organic feel to the rhythm. That's why you can get away with 
having a very off sense of rhythm and have a lot of our instruments be off the grid. But if we were to look at a trap beat, for example, This is a style that's known to be a little bit more quantized, a little bit less off the grid. It has a little bit more of a computerized feel, a little bit more sense of a perfect timing. So if I were to go and open up a lot of these instruments, for example, the snares are completely against the grid here. My hi-hats here are almost on the grid. You guys can see if I zoom in, they are a tiny bit off, but for the most part compared to our lo-fi beat, they are just a lot more on time. My kicks as well on the grid. So compared to our lo-fi beat, you guys can see a lot more of the components in this beat are closer to being perfectly quantized. They are a lot more closer to the grid. So because a lot of the components in this beat are a lot more closer to being quantized, I can get away with a lot less when it comes to taking certain components and having them be off the grid. For example, if I go into my kicks here, and I want to start playing with the sense of rhythm with these kicks. If I take this one here that plays right before the snare and I push it to be a lot closer to the snare, same with this one here. Again, this is closer to how our kick pattern looked in the lo-fi example. I had it completely off the grid, but when I play it in a lot more of a quantized context where a lot more of the components are quantized, you guys can hear how it sounds now. <laughs> So this doesn't sound as good now, even though I took the exact same unquantized feel as I did in the lo-fi example, this one just sticks out way too much. And this is a concept that you guys need to keep in mind. Whenever you have a lot of the components in your beat that are completely quantized, a lot more closer to the grid, whenever we try to take other components and be a lot more unquantized and try to create a crazy swing, it's going to stick out way too much and it's just not going to sound good. So again, the underlying concept when you're working with quantization is the idea of context. You need to understand what all of the other instruments in your beat are doing and based off that that's going to dictate how much we can quantize or unquantize other components in the beat now even though i had my trap beat very quantized and my lo-fi beat very unquantized i don't want you guys to walk away with the idea that that's the exact thing that you need to do whenever you do these styles of beats this is more so to show you guys how and when to use quantization and how to think about context but Again, feel free to experiment. If you want your trap beat to be completely unquantized and have a crazy swing, try it. If you want your lo-fi beat to have a quantized and rigid feel, try it, whatever. I don't wanna discourage experimentation. This is more so to show you guys how important context is in your beats. If you found this video helpful, guys, please do like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Leave a comment down below if you've learned anything. If you have any questions, again, let me know and I can clear it up for you. Again, my free drum kit is available to download in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday.